So, I am still on the Japanese version of Uniel, but uh, both versions can play with each other, so they're basically the same. They're both same patch, same balance, everything. So first, I'm just going to go over the the first thing that would probably happen as a new player. You're going to want to know which character you want to play. So I'm just going to kind of run through all the characters, some basic things about them. Um, where I think they fall on the tier list, how they play, uh, their movement options, stuff like that. So, start with Eltonum. Um, I think she has pretty average health. Her movement, she has a run, which is pretty standard. Most characters have that in this game. And then her playstyle, she's more of a rushdown, um, pressure, mix-up character, you know, like typical rushdown. Uh, she has some long-range normals and uh, guns she, she can shoot, just like a mid-range projectile. So, she's not really a zoner, but a couple of mid-range options. Uh, I would, for me, I think she's A tier. Uh, some other, I think most people agree with that, actually. So, next, Nanase. She's also rushed down, she has a run. Um, pretty pretty base, kind of like a, the, a Ryu character almost. She has projectiles that can go full screen. Um, average health, she has a run, I think I said that already. But um, yeah, so just kind of a more basic rushdown. Uh, she's not, I think she's not as good as Eltonum. She doesn't really have as good a mix up and you know, or doesn't have as big a normal, they're not as fast and stuff like that. But um, I would say she's maybe like low B tier, high C maybe. Uh, next is Hilda. She has low health. She's she has a run, but it's you know pretty slow. She's a zoner, just like full screen zoning most of the time. Wants to stay full screen. She can do mix ups from like mid to full screen. Uh, combos mid to full screen. She's just like you never really need to get close if you don't want to. Uh, she does have a pretty good vortex up close. Uh, it's vortex being like a 50-50 that uh, she can put people into. She also falls pretty low on the tier list. I would say she might be the top out of the bottom tiers I think. So next is Seth. He has the lowest health in the game. Uh, he's also the fastest character in the game though. Uh, he has, so he has a run just like most characters do, but his of course the fastest. He also has an aerial back dash, which is something that he, he's the only person who has that. Um, he's also a rush down. He has, he's kind of has a weird style rushing people down because he can he kind of like teleports around and stuff and you know it looks really cool doing stuff, but uh, it's not really as effect as effective as it looks basically. Um, so I would say he's he's also like really low tier, maybe maybe even the worst. I don't know. It it depends. Uh, next is Merkaba. He's kind of like Dalton, I guess. That's what that's what a lot of people compare him to. Um, I think he has a little above average health. He has a dash forward, just like a step dash, and I'm pretty sure that's what he has anyways. He also has a fly that he can do. So he can jump, and then if you press jump again, you can kind of just start like hovering left and right, and you can go up and down as well. Um, his playstyle is most people tend to play him kind of long range, like Dalsum. He has some full screen moves, they're not really projectiles, but they're like kind of like full screen Dalsum pokes. And he also has some air fireballs and stuff like that. Um, he's considered one of the top three characters in this game. So yeah, he's pretty good. Orie, uh, she's she has I think she has normal, just average health. She has a run. Um, no, no really specific movement options. Her 
force function, which is like a character specific thing, to gives her like another jump that crosses up. It's kind of weird, not really effective. Um, Playstyle, she's she's rushed down and she can sort of do a little bit of Oki, uh, where she, she kind of like has a persona that comes and helps her. And she'll set that on you and it's like, okay, you need to block this next mix up. Uh, she has pretty long range normals though, so she's pretty good at poking people out and stuff, but um, not the longest range or anything. I would say she's like she's like B tier. It's like middle of the middle of the pack. Waldstein has most health in the game. He's also considered he's supposed to be the grappler. Uh, he's top three in the game. He has pretty big normals as well. So that's that's something that's really good in this game. And he has step dash, so he can't run, but he can. He just has a normal like Street Fighter dash. Uh, he has really slow walk as well. But there's something in this game that I'll explain later that helps make up for kind of his lack of movement options, which also makes him way better than most grapplers, I guess. So Hyde, he's an, he's basically like you know main main character sword guy, right? Um, he's got a He's got a fireball, goes full screen. He can do a few different things after it. Um, it's a pretty easy character. He has pretty good normals, uh, you know, sword normals. He has a run for his movement. Uh, nothing else really special. He does pretty good damage. Uh, he's like middle of the pack as well, just B tier character. Lin, which is who I play. Um, She's, she's a pretty easy character as well. Um, she has a mid-screen projectile, which is one of, considered one of the best in the game. Just because she can do it in the air, she can do it in the ground. And it just really helps to make up for her lack of uh, range on her normals. And it just, it's really good. So, anyways, hey Sharp Object. Uh, she has a little bit lower than average health. And Hyde has average health, by the way, I think I forgot to mention. Yeah, I'll explain that uh, in a little bit. Sharp object. Okay, so... She... Lin is the second fastest character in the game. She has a run as well. Uh, she's a rush down character. She doesn't have really good mix-ups, but she does have really good pressure. Uh, I would say she's like the top of B tier on the tier list. Um, she has she has pretty good range for normals. Like as you, if you can see, she has like, the little dagger for like short normals, and then behind her on her other hand she has a sword, just a little bit bigger and harder to. <laughs> Brett. Um, yeah, so the sword has bigger normals basically. Uh, Carmine, I think he's one of the better characters in this game, probably top of A tier. And he is, um, I think he has a little bit above average health, but he's kind of like a, a setup character or a trap character, sort of. He's very interesting playstyle. He, to use his specials, you have to sort of spend your health, and then they're kind of just he like sets his blood down as traps on the ground and he can make them do different things stuff like that um, he has a run as well it's kind of slow but he has it so so yeah all right everybody's favorite uh trap character i don't i don't know of Catherine, but it's kind of like naoto I would say it's 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 a little bit different than Naoto, but yeah, it's sort of the same. Uh, so anyways, Gordo, top three as well. I think he has average or a little bit above average health. Yeah, my mic sucks. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so yeah, he is he has like almost full screen normals, like ridiculous range. I think 
I'm not a Carmine expert, but I think you can just... I think you can use the same move and it'll create up to two, is how it works. Or maybe it's his force function that creates another one. I'm not real sure on that, I haven't really messed with him much. But yeah, anyways, back to Gordo. Uh, so he's top three, he's... He can be played as rush down, which, which he has really good mix-ups because he has a command grab. And also, um, he can, if there's a matchup where he can kind of bully people from long range, then he can just do that as well. Um, he has extremely good normals and converts extremely well and also uh, kind of just wins at the system mechanics in this game, uh, which I'll explain later as well. So he's he's good beginner character, super easy. So if you just want to like, if you're just like, I don't really care, I just want to beat my friends at this game, and like I don't want to put too much effort into it, go ahead and pick this guy, because that's what you're going to get. So, Batista, she's also, I guess she's considered a zoner, she has a lot of projectiles, she doesn't really have full screen mix ups and full screen combos like Hilda has. Um, but she is actually really good up close, and she has, like, one of the best DPs, maybe in fighting games, ever. Um, so yeah, she has good defensive options, she has full screen options. Her mix-up is pretty good up close, but it's also, like, not safe. Um, you have to spend meter or spend, uh, the other resource to make it safe, so it's kinda... Yeah. Oh, I would say she's also um, A tier. Probably like middle, middle of A tier. Uh, Yuzu. This character is like, she's considered the hardest in the game. And also, she is, she has a run where Batista has a dash, I forgot to mention that, she has a step dash. Um, Yuzu has a run, it's not really fast. She also has teleports, which are... They're kind of hard to get used to. It puts her in her stance, and you just her stance is kind of what's hard about her, so... Uh, if you want to play her, it's going to take some time. But she has, like, full-screen normals. She has teleports. Um, or almost full-screen normals, not quite. So she's really, she's really strong, really hard. If you just... If you really like her, then definitely spend time it'll it'll pay off let's see here get caught up on the questions here yeah Batista, Kotsky, and Wall are the ones with uh, step dashes yeah that's that's right or hop dashes Okay, it looks like people in the chat mostly got the answers for me, thankfully. Thanks, guys. Uh, so, Chaos, he is he's a puppet character, but not... I don't know, he's a little bit different than, um, than like, Carl from uh, Blaze, but I think he's more like Relius. But I don't know, he's kind of a mix in between them. Uh, he has Run as well, of course, like, since most people do. <laughs> and he uh he's also considered like one of the worst in the game he just doesn't have most most of the characters that are considered not very good just don't have they either don't have the uh the super big normals or they don't have good reversal options yeah he's, he's a puppet character but not good <laughs> but i mean he's he's pretty cool he just doesn't I don't know. He's cool. Like if you're if you're interested in this type of character, you can do well if you you know if you want if you want to put the time into it. He can do stuff. But yeah, um, I think he has normal health, maybe a little bit lower. I don't know. He's a, he's a newer character, uh, so there's not very much, not as much people playing him. And he's he can kind of play full screen, or he can rush down. He doesn't really have like full screen mix ups or anything though. His pet can just attack you from full screen or up close. So 
Yeah, he's a puppet character, basically. Yeah, I have a mic, it's just not a very good one. Uh, Byakia, I'm not sure how much health he has, he's also a new character. It's probably average, from just from playing against him, that's what it seems like. Uh, he has a dash, just a run. He is a, he's another trap character. I think he's more, he's like Testament from Guilty Gear. He's more like Naoto than Carmine, I think. Um, what he does is he lays like webs around and they're kind of like, they're kind of hard to see, but they're, there's a indication of where they are. And you know, you have to, if you break them, uh, it gives him uh, some resources. And you know, if you, you can just, you can block them if you just want to do that. And he's he has pretty good normals, not like not even mid screen, I would say. He 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 has bad defensive options as well, so that's so those two things combined kind of put him at the the low tier there with all the other people that don't have those things. So he doesn't have really have very good mix ups either. But I don't know, he's pretty interesting. I see some people do well with him. And then, for some reason, a lot of people like to pick this guy, Kotsky. One of the three characters with a hop dash or step dash. Um, probably like the shortest normals in the game. Maybe him and Seth. He... Yeah. Really short normals. He has a DP, so he does have a reversal option, at least. Um, but yeah, short normals plus slow movement makes it really hard in some matchups for him he can I mean he can get the job done if you really want to work at it and be really super patient that you can and he has he has projectiles that go full screen too but they're 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 pretty slow um, so yeah he's he's bottom tier I wouldn't I wouldn't say he's the worst but he is in the bottom tier um, most people play him as a rush down like I don't I don't think he can he shouldn't be able to zone anyone out if if anyone can like, if your opponent is good enough, shouldn't be able to zone him out, but... But yeah, so that's all the characters. Um, so I am just gonna... Pick my character. That's the one I actually know. And... I should probably pick my character again. I'll just pick Cordo. I'm just going to go through some of the, the in-game systems. Uh, let me see, I think Brett answered this for me earlier. You can block things the wrong way. Left or right if you're shielding. Let me see what he said. Okay, so yeah, I answered that. Okay, so, in this game, there are four buttons, basically. So, A, which is just like norm for norm normal characters and stuff like that. It's just a short attack, short and fast, just like most games, like Light Punches and Street Fighter and Blaze do the same. A, B, mid-range, a little bit slower. C, longest range, a little bit slower. Uh, that's how it is for most characters. And then, those are all your attacks. And then you have D, which is like a system button, basically. And it does a few different things um, that have to do with the system. So and I'll explain those in a second. Um, first, I'm going to go over... Let me turn off meter here. I don't know how to... Oh, here it is. Okay. So, meter is gained, like, I think how it is in most fighting games now. It's when you get hit and when you're hitting them. So, you can see I get some there. And then, when I'm getting hit, still get some. So, pretty normal. Uh, you don't get it from running or anything like that, like you do in Guilty Gear. Uh, you also get it from blocking. Pretty sure you do. 
Yeah, you get a little bit. You'll get it from blocking as well. And uh, another button that I guess I should mention, which isn't useful for everyone, is uh, Force Function, which is a character-specific move. So for Lin, it's like it's super good. She does this, and it's kind of like a DP. Um, but yeah, so then you have Gordo, who has like this pretty much useless. You would never really want to do that. Another thing is force functions also cost a um, one of these little blocks at the bottom. This little meter at the bottom where it's uh, like shining purple or pink or whatever is called uh, the grid. So force function takes some of those meters, and what those are is when you're playing the game. You can get grid by moving forward, assaulting, by shielding things. Something like this. Thing. Okay, there we go. So uh, you get quite a bit if you shield something right. There we go. So I got quite a bit for shielding. And but you, as you can see, shielding, which is kind of like an instant block mechanic, it's back or down back and D um, gives you gives you grid like I was saying but um, it also takes off three frames or so I think yeah I think it's three three frames off of your block stun gives you some grid it also takes a little bit of meter uh, if it is blocked right I think There's, yeah I'm pretty sure that's how it works so and then Another thing you can do with the uh, system button is if you press it twice, which is system button B, D, press it twice, then you'll kind of do like a little freeze time thing like that, and that's called chain shift. And as you can see, all that, all those little blocks down there converted into a meter. I think it's 10 meter per block. Um, and like now you see that it's, it's glowing again, right? So, I'm, so since I'm winning the sort of grid war right now, I have access, I'm in the Vorpal state, so they call it. I have access to that, uh, I have access to Chain Shift again. So I could do this again now that I'm in it. So that little clock ticking right there, I think it's every 12 seconds, comes around. And whoever's winning the Grid War goes into Vorpal. Vorpal gives you 10% more damage. Yes, you need to be in Vorpal to Chain Shift. So like right now, uh, I'm not in Vorpal anymore. I used it. I can't change it. Like right now, it'll just do this, which is just this charges grid kind of slowly. But yeah, it just charges. So yeah, you have to be in Vorpal. But Vorpal, so Vorpal gives you the ability to chain shift, which is like a freeze time, uh, so you can see what's going on, see what mix up uh, opponents going for. So you can do it on wake up and be like, oh, should I DP right now? Or like, what what should I do? Or maybe you're just in the middle of a combo and like, oh, I, I want to be able to cancel this move or something and continue the combo. Kind of like a rapid cancel and blaze flu or a, a Roman cancel and Guilty Gear. Or one more cancel in Persona if you play that. Kind of like a FADC too in Street Fighter. But instead of costing your meter, it actually gives you meter and just costs this other resource down here. So it also gives you a 10% damage bonus. Just to all, like all your damage, 10% more. You can see right there under the combo, it says has my basic damage and then my bonus damage, which is being added from Vorpal. So we got the grid system and Vorpal. The way you get grid, moving forward. Assaulting gives you some. Assaulting is forward in D. It's a little short hop, kind of like King of Fighters. Uh, you can't block at all while you're assaulting. But you can do uh, any any air attacks. And it's, these are overhead attacks too, most of them anyways. Any that are normally air attacks or overheads are also um, overheads in assault. So it's 
It's pretty good for mix-ups, and everybody, every character in the game has this. And... So yeah. That's one way to get grid. Also shielding like I showed earlier. Uh, backdashing takes some grid. Except for Seth, I think? But yeah, for pretty much. Backdashing takes grid. Um, so it's... You know, it's and you can still back if you have no grid, you can still backdash. So it doesn't make it to where you can't do things. It's just that be aware when you're making a choice to backdash. Maybe you don't want to use that option if you're about to win the grid war. Like if it's a close, if it's close on the grid war, maybe you don't want to backdash right now so that you can go into Vorpal and then you can, um, you know, you can use the chain shift and get all that meter. You get the freeze time and. All that cool stuff. Bonus damage. So anyway, that's great. That's the way to gain it. Moving forward, moving back takes it away. Using force function takes it away. Um, shielding gives it to you as well. I think those are the main ways to get it. If you're Gordo, he, he takes it, which I was, what I was saying earlier. Whenever he does one of his uh, moves, he'll steal a little bit. Let's probably set this to the the non-training mode one. Make sure this is right. Okay, thing is back to normal now. So yeah, he can steal it from you. But yeah, that's that's just the Gordo thing. All right, so like I mentioned before, chain shift, uh, all the things it can do. You can't. One thing that I should mention, you can't do, which a lot of people may like or dislike. Like in Street Fighter, if you wake up DP and you see that they blocked it, you can cancel out of it. And the same thing in Blaze Blue, you can just be like, oh, never mind, that was a bad choice. 50 meter, free get out of jail. In this game, you can't. If if you're winning the uh, the war, like you can't spend any... Oops, let me set this back. You can't, I don't think any DPs in this game, pretty sure none of them. Any frame one invuln type moves can't be chain shifted out of on block, so you will, you still will get punished even if you're in Vorpal. So just be aware that it, it doesn't save you like that. But what it does do, turn this on where I have it all the time. What it does do is you can cancel things that you normally can't cancel. Um, so like a good thing for Lin is so I can shoot this projectile right here, but I have to sit here. See how it just kind of like sits there, I can't move. Well, maybe I just want to like shoot it and then be able to move again to get a mix up. So, for, you know, each character can use it in a different way. We can, all the characters can use it for extending combos and stuff. Um, different things can or can't be chain shift, that's all character dependent. And that the one thing that was universal is DPs can't be on block. On hit, I think everyone's DP can be chain shifted, but yeah. If it if it's blocked, it's blocked. You you can punish them. Um so I went over assault already, I think. Just forward and D. Every character has this. Um good mix up option. Gives you overhead. It's a short starter, so it's like it won't you won't get a ton of damage out of it or anything. You can't block at all while you're assaulting. Um, for characters like Lin and Akatsuki, I forgot to mention earlier, they have double jumps. And they're the only ones uh, who have that. So, they can't double jump during assault. So, I, and I don't know, I don't think Seth can like air back dash either or anything like that. I know he can fast fall, I'm pretty sure he can. But anyways. So it's all your, if you if you commit to assault you're pretty much stuck with this option, but it's pretty good for mixing up people. And the anti airs in this game they're not like uh, Blaze Blue where you're just like okay here's head and vuln guaranteed if they're above you you got this. That's not really how it works in this game. Um, it's it's just kind of like oh well hopefully this this normal hits them before they're hitbox covers my hurt box, so it's just like, you know, your anti-airs really just depend on your character. Not not everyone has a good one. So, I don't know if I should go over the Assault OS. 
It's different for every character. I guess I can... Oh, let me go over throws real quick. So throws in this game, I think they're 5 frames for everyone, or 4 frames if you don't want to count. First active. And... They are techable. I think it's a 14 frame window, you can tech it. So let me put him on blocking again. And let's see if he'll tech it. Yeah. Whenever you tech a throw in this game, if you are the defender, you are plus 8 against the attacker. So it doesn't go back, it, does, it doesn't just go back to neutral. The person who defended is at an advantage. So like right now, like this, Gordo would be at an advantage, be plus 8. It's not, I'm not punishable, but... Yeah. Um, so just know that, you know, after, if you try to throw someone, they tech it. You have to make a choice here. You could backdash, or you could DP if you think they're gonna attack, or you could attack if you're, if you're really bold and you think that they won't attack you, or something like that. Um, but also, throws being 14 frames techable, there's also a different kind of throw. If you try to throw them while they're in block stun, instead of just like whiffing like it does in like Street Fighter and Injustice, it'll kind of do like a purple throw, like in Blaze Blue. Um, but it's called a, it's a gold throw in this game, so you can see the gold kind of light around him. See, and it gives you I think like 24 frames, or something like that. It's like over 20, so it's definitely reactable. If they try to throw you while you're in block stun, it gives you more time to tech it. You're still plus eight, so just be aware of that. And another small mind game I should mention. Or actually, just uh, something I should mention with the grid in general. It can get broken. So... I don't know how to tell Gordo to... I'll just get him to do this. Okay. So you can see, Gordo is shielding my attacks, right? So you're thinking like, oh wow, he should just shield all the time, right? Look at this, he just, look, he's getting a bunch of grid and all this good stuff. Actually, your grid can get broken if you shield wrong. So now, he can't gain any grid at all. And even if he, like, had Vorpal, or if he had, uh... Yeah, if he had Vorpal, he can't chain shift now. So you can also, you know what? Throws aren't the only way to break it. See, and he couldn't shield either. He couldn't shield, you can't assault. Basically, your whole D button just stops working if you get grid broken. So... And that, later, like that, that'll be a huge deal. Um, once you start getting into the game and start using the, the grid system a little bit more. So it doesn't only get broken off throws though. If he gets mixed up, like if, like right there, he was trying to shield a mid or a low, and I hit him with an overhead. So it, it's broken, like it's, you blocked wrong, you shielded wrong, I mean. So it gets broken. And it comes back after a few seconds, or after you use this thing, called Veil Off, which I don't, I'm just going to tell him to come and grab me, and I'll do the shielding. Okay, so let's say I'm shielding, okay, I get grid broken, so there is a way to get my grid back, and I, I have to spend all my meter, or at least 100, so if I have 100 meter I can do this thing, and this thing that I'm talking about it's called Veil Off. What Veil Off does is it puts your meter into sort of like a timer. And the timer is longer or shorter depending on how much meter you have or had at the time. You need at least 100, which is 50% in this game, because a full, full thing of meter goes up to 200. So 100, 50% of your meter. You need at least 100 to be able to... Uh, Let's see if I can get my meter back real quick. But yeah, I need at least 100 to be able to veil off. There we go. I can still do it. See the timer is cut in half. Also, while you're in veil off, you can use any of your specials. Like their meter cost doesn't matter at all. Uh, it'll it'll spend some of the uh, the veil off time accordingly, like you won't just get to keep going until time runs out. It'll spend some of the time if it's a, a special move, like a 
EX move or another meter spending move. Which I, I probably should have just gone over those moves already, but I'll go over them after, um, after I go over Veil Off. Veil Off also makes you do 20% more damage. And I think it will just show up in the, um, I get Gordo to chill out for a second. I think it'll show up the same way. So yeah, it shows bonus damage, and it also, it stacks with Vorpool. So that's 10% from Vorpool, 20% from Veil Off. And also, if the opponent gets hit with Veil Off, it'll break their grid. So it's kind of a risk. It can be punished. It's it's full invuln, but whenever you're coming, whenever you're recovering, it can be punished, kind of like a DP. So it's a risk, costs all your meter. You could get punished, and it just your meter will be running out while you're getting punished. Uh, or you know you could break their grid and fix yours if it was broken, and have the opportunity to be doing 20% more damage at least. So that's that's fail off. It can some people some characters can use it in combos. Uh, Lin can. She has a few ways she can use it, but yeah, uh, it's kind of hard. But yeah, yeah, you shouldn't worry about that right now. Just know if you're a character like Hilda, Biakia, someone without a good reversal, that's your reversal basically. It's everyone has it, so. Just be aware that that if you don't if you don't have like a, a DP or one of your supers, if you don't have like a super that's basically a DP as well. Which I think and they call supers EX EX moves in this game. And then um, there's another super too. I'll show in a second. Which is like more like an ultra from Street Fighter. But if you don't have a reversal. This is it. That's all you have, and you can you can charge it. I think that gives you a little bit more time, but really probably shouldn't do that because it gives them even more time to to be like, oh, he's doing a bail off. Let me just block it and then kill him. So yeah, that's that. It's like a super expensive reversal if you don't have one already. Okay, so like I was forgetting to mention earlier. There's EX moves in this game. Uh, for everyone, it works the same. You have kind of like a so. Lin has her projectile. It's A version, B version, which is done same motion, just different uh, attack buttons. Then she also has a C version, which costs 100 meter, which is half your meter, and it's same input just with the C button. So, and it's like that for everyone. It's like that for all of her specials too. So, those are EX moves, and it's, just, it's basically like Street Fighter. Just instead of costing one bar, it costs half your your super meter. Um, or it's, and it's just like a EX move in Persona. As well. There's also a 200 meter. There's two 200 meter moves. One of them is, I think it's the same for everyone, uh, half circle forward and D. It'll spend all your meter. It's different for everyone. You know, how much it hurts, what its properties are. Um, some people it's better to do them, some people it's better not to. I think all, pretty much everyone can combo into them. But sometimes, like for Lin, it's actually better to just use two EX moves rather than to do a super at the end, just because it'll scale better, it'll do more damage overall. Some characters maybe it doesn't work like that, maybe their EX moves don't chain together well or something like that. So it's, that's just different for everyone. There's also, there's not really any comeback mechanics in this game, but um, like comeback mechanics like X Factor or like, oh, you're at you're at low health, so now you take less damage and get access to more supers or anything like that. But there is this one, there is one thing, you do get one more super, kind of like an Astral, I guess. Or like the opposite of an Astral, because you have to be the one at low health. Uh, once your health is orange like this, which is I believe is any time under 
then you have access to what they call Infinite Worth EXS, and they, their ultras are called Infinite Worth, basically. So, it's just the, uh, if you press all the buttons, A, B, C, and D, or maybe it's just A, B, and D. Um, you go into this anime cutscene thing, and everyone has the same startup. It's always this. It's punishable for everyone. And some people it's really good. You can combo into it with some people. But some for I think most characters it's kinda just whatever. Like if you're just trying to show off like you're about to you're about to win the round or something, then you can you know, you can style on it. But okay. Um what else? I'm sure I'm forgetting some things. I know. I'll go over one other thing that I at least remember I've written down right now. Another defensive option. So if you're familiar with any of the Arc System games, they have Counter Assault. Um, Guilty Gear has uh, its version of Counter Assault, I forgot what they call it right now. Uh, Dead Angle. I don't think Street Fighter has one, but like Injustice has it too, with the, the pushback, kinda. It's kinda the same. Um, this game has that too. And it's, it's a little weird, like I wouldn't say it's extremely good or anything. It's not as good as in those games. But essentially it does work the same. Alpha counter, yeah. That was, I think, that was, uh, I don't know, that was probably SF3. I didn't really play that one, but yeah, alpha counter, I'm pretty sure. It is similar. Anyways. So how you do that, it's called guard thrust in this game. How you do that is you, while you're blocking. Oh, it was in, okay. It was in, uh, Street Fighter Cross Second as well. Alright, cool. While you're blocking, you do quarter circle back or 214 D. While I'm block stun, let's do this. So, what does it cost you, right? In other games, it costs like 50 meter. I don't know what it costs in Street Fighter Alpha, but. But yeah, in this game, it depends what it costs. If you are in. Forpal, like I am right now, or I was. Once I get into Vorpal again, I'm pretty sure it costs. Let me take my meter off just to make sure. Okay. So if you're in Vorpal, it'll cost you your Vorpal state. There you go. Cost me my Vorpal state, I'm not. It's kind of like using Chain Shift, except. You get that instead. So it's not too bad. Whenever, if it just costs you Vorpal, it's like, uh, okay, that's not that bad. I can get get him away from me and get back to doing, you know, go back to neutral. Um, it can get, it's not fully invuln, it can be punished, like, which is kind of why it's not as good, I think. But, and it's, and it's a little bit slower, I think. I don't know, that depends on the game, but yeah. Uh, so, some characters, some people like to use it. It's not a bad option, it's there. If you're not in Vorpal, though, let me just put... Gordo in Vorpal. It costs all your meter. And I think you need at least 100. Sorry, I'm kinda slow. Menus and stuff. Okay, so let's see if I can do it with 100. Wake up, Gordo. Okay, so you need at least 100, and it breaks your grid. So it takes all your meter, you need 100 to do it. So 100 plus meter breaks your grid, right? So, and this, this will often be the one you get because if you're winning the Vorpal game probably on offense. But I mean, if you've been in defense for a long time, you've been shielding correctly, you've just been blocking forever, then yeah, you'll get your, you get a reward essentially for, for doing good on defense. 
so you get sort of a, a free escape. I mean, it costs Vorpal. It's not nearly as bad as what happens when you're not in Vorpal. So just remember that that is an option. If you just don't know how to get out of someone's pressure, and you're just like, whatever, just get off me, you can do that. And just, just remember, it might not be as good of a thing as you think, or maybe if, if you're in Vorpal, then it's fine. Okay, so... Put all this back. Um, another thing. The combos in this game, I would say, like, as, as a person who primarily plays anime games, if you come from anime games already, like, Melty Blood or Blaze Blue Guilty Gear Persona, it's not going to be hard for you to do combos in this game with pretty much any character. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, there's also the the auto combos, which some people try to make a big deal of, but it's just like in Persona, um, except it doesn't give you more meter like Persona wants to do. There you go. Here's the auto combo. I just walked up. Bam day. It spent uh, 100 of my meter, just half. Gave me 2600 damage. That's not very good. Like, I can get 2600 damage just like without spending a meter. So, that's not a very good combo. But if you're just testing out characters or something and trying to get a feel for them, you can just do that, right? So, I'll just let you know that that's there. But the, the combos that are like optimal. They're not that hard for most characters. For Lin, especially, and Gordo, they're like really simple. And another cool thing about these characters specifically, and I'm pretty sure for most characters in the game, pretty much everyone, I know some characters have like one character specific combo maybe, because of Lin, she's really small. Um, but most characters, like Lin, can do all of her combos on everyone, even Lin. So, and most characters work like that. So there's not like weight classes like in some games or a bunch of character specific stuff like I know there is in Blaze Blue and probably Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear probably has both actually. Um, so yeah, you can kind of just be like, okay, here's here's the BNB with this character, that's it. So it's, to me, that means it's pretty easy to get into. Uh, and for teaching other people as well, it's like, look, can you do this one combo? You just need to practice this one combo. Just do this, and then, you know, do the stuff. Like, that's it. So, anyway, that, um, all the characters that I've played, maybe except for Seth, basically works like that. Some people might have two, if you have a, if you go into a short starter. And then when you get when you want to do more optimal combos, there's a little bit more stuff you can add on, but they're not really like huge bonuses. Not you're not going to be getting twice as much damage and stuff like that for for Lin, anyways. Okay. So yeah, combos not too bad. Uh, the way that they work is the combo system is a little complex. You can pick people, you don't have to juggle them in the air, they don't have to stay in the air the whole time like they do in Injustice. You can pick them back up off the ground, but I think they can only touch the ground once or something like that. So it's like I just picked them back up there. Um, there's not really any infinites anymore, I don't think there is any. At all actually, if there is, they haven't been discovered yet. So yeah, combos, depends on your character, I would say most characters, like, I, I can play Yuzu as well, and she's considered the hardest, but, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because I'm an anime player, but yeah, I would say that most characters are pretty simple, and if you're, like, if you think that's going to be your problem, pick one of these two characters on the screen right now, and probably hide as well. There's, there's a few characters that just really have super easy combo game. Okay, so, pressure in this game... It's kind of strange, even to to anime players, unless you're a Melty Blood player. It was strange to me, because I'm not a Melty Blood player. 
So, you can do, if you're familiar with Gatlings, how it works is, in like Blaze Blue, you can do A, B, C, D, and anything else is kind of dependent on the character and if it Gatlings or not. Um, so in this game, yeah, you can do A, B, C, D, or just A, B, C, you don't really have a D. Um, and you can also do like Mash A. But something that you can't do in the other games is you can do the A, B, C, D thing in any order. So you could do C, B, A. Or B, A, C. And, you know, you can mix that in with, like, all your directions, all your normals, basically. You can do all your normals in a string once. So, how pressure works in this game how most characters use it, especially Lin, is what they do what is called reverse beat. I think that's a melty blood term. I don't know what they call it. And Unio, probably the same thing. It's made by the same people. So you will come in and you know maybe you'll start with your fastest normal. Okay. So for Lin, either one of these. One of your A normals. But you want to save one for later to get out quicker. Uh, so I got a question in chat about the force function. Uh, the, the only thing common between force functions is that they cost grid. Everything else is completely character dependent, whether they're useful or not. Like you said, uh, Yuzu's is not very good. You'll probably never see it. Gordo's, not good. You'll never see it unless it's like an accident. Lin has a, maybe the best in the game. You'll see this hopefully all the time. Like, I use it all the time. So, it depends. It depends on your character. It's, yeah, like, super character dependent. But they all cost grid. That's the only thing that that is kind of universal there. And they're all the same button, too. They're all B and C. As you can see on my inputs there. Looks like that for Gordo. Same button. He does his thing. But anyway, so back to pressure. Using that reverse speed thing, you can kind of quicken your recovery. So like, if I do this move, I can get. I'll just get punished. It's really slow. It has a lot of recovery. So what a lot of the rushdown characters will do, anyways, and even even at full screen, like Hilda can do this too. Um, if she does like a really long range normal and Gordo too, do a really long range normal, and you you don't want to sit in the recovery. You can do something like this. So I get out quicker, right? So that is the main... A lot of the... A lot of people's pressure revolves around doing that. Like that. And... In most cases, I'm pretty sure, um... They're still negative. It's like Lin. She's always negative, even when she does that. But it's it's kind of confusing. You don't you never know when she's gonna just stop. When she's gonna stop pressing all of her attack points, she can do it at any time. So it kind of resets pressure. And yeah, and you can if you're watching. Like I know a lot of people coming to anime type games. The pressure is a huge deal. They have like they're like I don't understand when do I like. When does this person stop attacking me? Because I'm not seeing it. And it's just like, yeah, okay. So in this game, look for look for what this is called, reverse beat. Look for when they do that, and then look for the pattern when they're doing this. Like, if I do this every time, that same thing every time, you know that at the end of this move, when I'm about to do this, you should probably do something. You should either jump, assault, press one of your normals, because I'm gonna be negative trying to reset this, but I'm just trying to, it's just kind of like a mind game thing, like, oh, look, it's like, oh yeah, uh, oh, my pressure's over, and I'm doing something else now, start it over again. So just be aware, if you're having trouble getting out of people's pressure, which probably will if you come up against 
someone who knows how to play quite a bit, look for that and just try to do experiment a little bit, see what you can do out of it. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that because there's people all the time, since I play Lin and that's kind of one of her things, people all the time are just like, I don't understand, like when is it my turn? Just be aware that that's your turn going by. Like, it's fast, but yeah. What's a good counter pick for Nanase's theme? That's a really good question. I just listen to my own music, to be honest. I hear Merkava and Byakuya's theme are good counter picks. Yeah, someone's a Merkava. <laughs> okay, so. I can't really think of anything else at the moment. If anyone has any questions in the chat besides how to counter pick not a safe theme, I think everyone's still working on that. It's really difficult. We haven't found an answer, a solid answer yet. About how shielding overhead makes. Oh! I did forget to mention. I don't know if I talked about that specifically, but I did forget to mention a few things that some people in chat are talking about now. So, like I was mentioning before, assault, it's overhead, right? Pretty good overhead. Um, and I think any jump as well. Let me just get Gordo to do it. Okay. Just test with a regular jump real quick. Oh, I forgot to make him block. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Let's replace this thing. Sometimes, it doesn't want to do... So he jumps at me, I'm like, oh, I knew you were going to do that. And I can shield to get some of the blocks done off. It looks like it... Yeah, okay, so it doesn't... I don't think it happens for regular jumps. But yeah, with Assault... So if he does this... Oops. If he does an Assault and then an Aerial... And I shield it, then he gets, I think it's 10 frames more of uh, landing recovery. I gotta make sure I shield it right. But it makes it like pretty much to where it's either, maybe it depends on the move. Maybe I just suck at punishing it. But um, yeah, it makes it to where he's either punishable or he's negative to where he can't just start pressure. Like most of the time, if, like, right here, he's still in block stun. So I can keep going. But if it's shielded, then they actually gain landing recovery. That's either 8 or 10 frames. I think it's 10, but... So they gain landing recovery, and they... they like, if they do anything, they're gonna get hit for trying to do anything. It's not their turn anymore. So just be aware that if someone keeps jumping in on you, maybe you don't have good anti-air, you can shield it. But also, like I mentioned before, they can assault at you, you shield, and then they break your shield by grabbing you or doing a low. So just just remember it's a risk, but if they're like super predictable and you're like, yeah, like Carmine's jump C pretty much every time. Sometimes they'll they'll mix it up and do like a little charge thing and then grab you. So you gotta watch for like you gotta watch for those things. You gotta be careful still when you're shielding. Just remember, that's another option. There was something else. Difference between air assault and ground assault. So I actually forgot to mention. You can jump and then assault in the air. It's kind of like an air dash, but... You know, not, not quite like the, the arc system works air dashes. Still has an arc to it. Um, so the difference is... Whenever you do an air assault, 
Whenever you do, oh, let me just, I think I forgot to mention this for ground assault. For ground assault, you can only do one move, no matter what. So I can't, like, do my other attacks. But with air assault, you actually can do more than one move. Like that, I did two. I like that. So I think that's the main difference that I know about it. If there's any other ones that people know in chat, then you'd probably be informing me. Because that's, that's what I use it for. I just use it for movement, to get over things. or um, And it's, it's especially good for Lin. She can, you know, just like, keep, keep moving. And then, you know, she can fly, so. Um, yeah, I, I just use it for movement, or if I want to do a double overhead, everyone can do this. So like, okay, yeah, this, I'm kind of being predictable. They always know I'm going to do an overhead and then a low. So you're just like, okay, let me do, oh, double overhead. And then, you know, they, were, they went to block the low, because they saw the first one come out. They'll get hit. Yeah, it's just one normal. I also forgot to mention, there's dash normals, everybody has them. So, I don't think anybody has a dash A, so your A is the same. But everybody has dash B and dash C normals. Um, how good it is depends on your character, of course, but yeah. That's just one more, like, universal thing. I also forgot to mention, back dashes are in Vuln. Uh, how in Vuln depends on your character, of course. But they are in Vuln. So, like in Street Fighter and uh, the Arc System Works games, you can use it as sort of a reversal, depending on your character. And Assault starters are also bad, considered bad or short starters, which means they'll just they'll scale really hard. Whereas if you did the same thing with a normal jump, like this is Lin's normal jump, it would actually be, depending on the move, like that, as a assault or a jump C, it's actually a good starter for Lin. And she still has access to her, to like all her air options. I can do two normals, I can do a normal and a special. So assaults, it's, it's a risk and a reward thing. It's quick overhead, it gives you half a grid. And you can invade the other person's grid too. But I believe whenever you chain shift, you don't get meter for their half of the grid. You, there's a cap on it, basically. Um, so, yeah. Salt, quick overhead. Can only do one move, but pretty good for mixing up. Get okay damage out of it. Definitely worth it. I use, like, it's pretty much Lin's main mix-up tool. And of course, you can get creative too, and almost every character can do something like this. Is I can be like, okay, look, I assaulted, I'm gonna do an overhead. And then I can just not do an overhead, right? I could just assault twice. And people would think, oh, they assaulted and they landed, I should block a low, and they just assault again and do something. Or a lot of characters will do something like this. They they can charge a move, and it's like, uh, it might hit, it might be an overhead, or it might, no, nope, I'm gonna do another overhead, or you can do, no, it's a low. So, you can get creative with your mix-ups and stuff, but Assault can also be shielded. Of course, you can hit them if you have a good quick move, or you predict their Assault, you can just be like, nah, get out of here. Um, or if you have like a, a DP or something, Reversal, just do that to them. They can't block, so. And another thing about, like, blocking in the air, it is, it's possible in this game. Let's see if this works, actually. Okay, so you see, he can block my projectiles, but he can't block my, like, my air moves and stuff in the air. So it's like, you can block some things in the air, but not most things. So it's not, that's why you don't want to be in the air all the time, because you're you're open. Just like in Street Fighter, it's, it's more like Street Fighter in that sense. If you're in the air, you're in a, a punishable place, so make sure to jump wisely, basically. 
or else they're just going to be eating like a full combo every time you jump. Especially if you fight someone with a really good anti-air. Like if you're just jumping around over there and then fight someone with anti-air like this, then yeah. So don't jump. I see a lot of a lot of newer players just jumping like all the time. So try to try to stray away from that as much. Uh, something that might help you is so like I mentioned before, dashing. Like normal games, you can just press forward, forward, and you press back, back to back dash. There's a command dash in this game, kind of like in Marvel. Um, if you press forward A and B or back A and B, then they'll go into a dash. So if you need to, if you're fighting someone who's like a zoner and you want to, you want to get in and you know you're a rushdown character, then you can do this. And this whole time, like unlike Street Fighter, this whole time where she's stopping, she's actually blocking. If if something were to hit her, she would just block it because I'm holding back. So I can just press forward A and B, and then back really quick. She's still moving forward, but she's safe. So, instead of jumping, try doing that. Because I know most people will be like, oh look, here's a projectile. It looks like that area is covered, I can't get in anymore, right? So in Street Fighter, you would maybe focus through it. Oh yeah, Command Dash. With Batista, yeah, it's probably, I don't know. It's probably great too. I like, uh, with the Akatsuki, I would definitely use it. I use it with Lin anyways. Just because it's faster for me. Like, it's less time of letting go of back. The way I see it. I play on a hitbox though, so it's kind of, I don't know, different maybe. But yeah, so just be aware that you can dash like that. Maybe if you play Marvel and you you like dashing like that, just know it's it's in this game too. Uh, and you can cancel dashes into attacks. And it doesn't only have to be a dash attack, so like that. I was dashing and doing my standing attack. And then here's my dash attack, I can do that too if I want. And you can jump, you can shield. I think you might have to wait until... You have to like wait a split second or so for your shield. But yeah. So that's one, one thing to do instead of jumping. Someone's throwing projectiles like this. You'll keep getting closer and be safe while you're doing it. Um, there was something else. There isn't any air throws like there is in Plays Blue. Uh, some characters have them. I think that only being Eltnum, the only one I can remember. But yeah, can't air throw. It's not like a normal thing in this game. Yeah, I knew I was gonna feel like I was gonna go over something else, but I forgot. Oh, Akatsuki has one too, okay. So yeah, Akatsuki has an air throw too. Kinda like, I mean, that's kinda like Street Fighter 2, like, Gaio has one, and Kami or, uh, new Kami, whatever her name is, forgot. DiCapri. So yeah, most people don't have them, this, it's whatever. You can't tech them, even if they did their command grabs. Uh, something that is interesting is, like, Gordo has a command grab. But he can tech throws using, instead of using the normal A and D input, which is throw, uh, he can use his command grab input, which is quarter circle back, and it'll tech a normal throw as well. And if for some reason you want to, you're playing Waldstein and you want to do a 360 to tech your throws, yeah, he can do that. So just, that's just like a little, some, some people don't know about that. Um, I guess I could go over the Assault OS now. It's kind of like an extra thing. So I think everybody in the game can do what is called an Assault Option Select. And it's different for every character in the game. Essentially what you do is you either tech a throw or beat an Assault. With, and this is like one of the only Option Selects that's kind of common in this game. You either tech a throw or beat an Assault with one button combination. I know Street Fighter has a ton of OS's. Blue has Barrier OS. 
It's kind of like that. It's kind of like Barry OS. So let's see if Gordo. Did his assault. Then I could press. Oh yeah, should be good. Should be able to. Alright. For Lin, it's 2B. 2B plus grab, like at the same time. Almost the same time. With 2B being slightly um, before. And it's just like. So it's like it kind of beats his assault. I mean, doesn't like outright punish him for doing it. But that's just that's just Lin. Like she just doesn't have something very good for that. She has another one, just a little more complex. But I'm gonna make a Lin tutorial later, and I'll go over that. So like for Gordo, uh, he has one as well, which is like 2C and then AD. And he he either does his anti-air. Oh, I guess I should show the other half of it. OS. So if he ran up and decided he's not gonna assault and just throw, then since I pressed them kind of like so close together or whatever, that's, it, don't, it has to do with timing. So right there I press 2B AD, right? And it takes the throw. That's that's the OS. Uh, I mean you can you can beat it just by like walking up and pressing a button on them. Depending on what their uh, their version of the OS is, but everyone has something like that. So depending on which character you play, it's gonna be different. Uh, the general idea is anti-air plus throw tech, what is beats assault or throw. So whenever you're looking at your character, just think about that. Uh, okay. What else? Anyone else have any other questions? I guess something I should have mentioned earlier. The reason why I was saying this is this is pretty easy for maybe like like uh, difficulty of this game execution wise. Probably not too hard for like Street Fighter and uh, anime players, but maybe hard for like uh, NRS players. It's just because it has it has those kind of motions, like it has the weird uh, half circles. Uh, not not too many half circles. I guess depends on the character. It has like sure you can input as quarter circles, pretty normal one for for uh, NRS. But yeah, you might have to get used to some weird input things if you don't play games that already have those. How do you fight Gord with Akatsuki? Dash block. That's pretty much it. Okay. So, something else I forgot to mention is this game has um, what's called cross-up protection. And that basically just means that you can't come from one side, like I'm on the left right now, and just like jump to the other side and be doing an attack and they'll all of a sudden have to block the other way. Um, Crossbow protection makes it to where they'll, they can block either way uh, and it'll just, it'll be like, oh okay, I see, I see what you're trying to do here. No, you can't do that because those are, those mix-ups are typically pretty BS, and it's like, oh, well, what do you expect me to do? That's, like, unreactable. So that's kind of just ignored in this game. So if I were to do, so I do this, okay, just block it backwards, but if I were to do, like, that, then he could still block it the way that I started, or over here, like that. He could be holding towards where I'm at now, and it would still block. Uh, the only exceptions, I think, are, um, Carmine and Chaos. Whenever you, uh, whenever they, like, jump over and they have, like, some weird, like, trait, uh, trait or just, like, other stuff. It's kind of weird. Uh, and Lin can cross you up on the ground because she can, Lin and Elton and, uh, Seth, I guess, can cross you up 
on the ground because like the, this, that's actually a cross up. So some characters can still do cross ups like that. Um, also, yeah, no, I think I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, that just be aware that if you're trying to come up with some like super crazy setups like that, and like oh yeah, it's gonna cross them up. Probably it's probably not going to. Um, another thing I forgot to mention was the tech options. So whenever you get knocked down, that on the ground you have two options, or I guess three technically. You can not do anything. The character will just lay there, get up eventually. You're still in Volm while she's getting up, even though you didn't press anything. Uh, you can hold a button, like A, B, C, or D, and you'll get that recover message, and it'll be full in Volm once again. Full in Volm so you can block her attack again. So you can see, turns green, flips up, and you can, you can just delay it a little bit too if you want. It's not like a set time like it is in uh, Ultra Street Fighter. Um, you can also kind of do a backwards roll. Still, full and bold can't be punished. So it's if someone's trying to do some kind of setup on you, you can just get out of it normally. It avoids a lot of things. It's really useful if you just want to get away from someone in general. <laughs> There's no forward tech. That's the only thing that. Uh, most anime games have a way for you to roll forward as well. This one doesn't. I think that's all, all the ground options. In the air, there is a forward tag. So, let me see if I can get... Okay, I'll just see if that works. Okay, so I can tag forward. I can tag neutral, and I can tag back. Um, when you tech, it's like Street Fighter, when you tech in the air, you can't do anything until you land. And you're fully in Volm, so you can't be touched either. And then when you land, you can attack again. So, in, in Blaze Wu, as soon as you tech in the air, you can start attacking again. And this, you can't. You, you have to wait until you get to the ground again, like in Street Fighter. So yeah, I just wanted to go over that as well. If not... I think I will just end it here, because it has gone on pretty long. Uh, if you have any questions, I will... I'll probably end the video here, but I can answer and chat. Or if you want to uh, ask me on Twitter, just got the game, what's good character, to just get the feel for the game. Um, Gordo, the guy on the, the right. Or who was on the right, I don't know. Yeah, so Gordo, Hyde, Lynn. Those are those are good characters to start with. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, most of them are And Merkava as well. He's, I think he's a little bit, he's a little bit weirder. He's not really hard, but yeah. He's also, he's just a really good character. I think Gordo is probably the easiest. Like, character in the game, he'll have the easiest time winning. If you just want to win and you don't care about your character at all, just pick Gordo. I mean, you'll, it's, he's not like broken to where it's like, oh, you don't even have to play the game anymore, you're the best. You're still gonna get beat by people who know how to play. So, but he's just, he's good. He's good to start with, for sure. But, uh, alright guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, you can tweet at me. At Twitter, it's at OMG Ayane, A Y A N E. Uh, if you're watching my stream right now, then it should be. At the bottom, maybe. I'll just type it in the chat. It's the same as same as my stream name. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Uh, it'll also be uploaded to my YouTube. I'll tweet when it is. 
And I'll also be making a like a really more specific guide for Lin later that goes into just a ton of Lin stuff, just like all our, the basic stuff, normals, specials, all that stuff, what you should be doing for pressure, all kinds of different mix-ups you could be doing, uh, how to approach some kind of stuff in general, how to like even go into like what combos you should be using to start out with. I'll go into like her more advanced OS thing that I was talking about earlier. But yeah, um, I will probably do that another day. And all this will be uploaded to my YouTube, which I will tweet on my Twitter. So thank you everyone for watching, and thank you for everyone who retweeted me. And see you later.